Hello and welcome back to the Essex Allotment Farm. Uh, as you can see behind me, it's a cloudy, miserable day. But despite that, in this video, we're going to be planting out in one of our polytunnels. I'm going to start with some of the warm weather crops like tomatoes. I'm going to show you in this short video how I um, am going to be planting them out this year in the polytunnel behind me. Um, so yeah, that's what this video is about. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Alex. I'm the founder of the Essex Allotment Farm for which in its most part is a four seasons market garden um, that grows organic vegetables um, and sells them direct to end consumer through veg boxes and farmers markets. But today I'm at the consultancy site planting out in the big polytunnels behind me. And so let's go and have a look at what we're going to be doing and um, I'll show you it's done. So here we are in the uh, second polytunnel. Uh, I'm going to show you it in, in a minute, but let me just uh, talk to you about my thought process. So we've been monitoring mainly overnight temperatures uh, in these polytunnels um, over the last week or so and uh, I'd usually like to have my tomatoes, aubergines, uh, cucumbers, stuff like that planted out sort of mid-April um, but as you well know if you're from the south of England or it's been similar across most of England our overnight temperatures are still getting as low as two, three, four degrees outside um, so I've been a little bit reluctant to stunt some of the plant's growth um, by planting them out in the polytunnel. However, uh, space is becoming an issue now in the um, greenhouse and at some point we've got to take the plunge. So uh, what we did three nights ago, um, we were due two degree overnight temperature. We planted four of the, or sorry, six of the tomato plants out in the bed behind me and uh, sort of monitored them for a few days to make sure that they weren't gonna get killed off completely and um, you know, just mo monitor the leaf quality and uh, just keep an eye on them for the yeah two, no, three nights that they've been out. And they seem to have survived, so we're gonna go ahead and put some more out. Um, whilst I do that, I'm gonna show you how I plant the tomato plants um, for a bumper harvest later in the season. I actually forgot to mention in that little uh, monologue there um, that we've been monitoring the temperatures here and the polytunnels have been remaining um, about three degrees warmer than the outside temperature. So where we've had two degrees, they've been five, and now we're due sort of four and five degrees overnight temperatures. It should be hovering around eight, nine, and 10 degrees in here overnight, which won't stunt or kill the growth of the tomatoes. They won't necessarily thrive in temperatures like that, but like I said, at some point, you've got to take the plunge and uh, take the risk and get them out. And I think we've, by testing these six um, plants behind me for three nights, we, within the coldest overnight temperatures that we're getting, um, I think we've done enough to give ourselves the confidence to get them out in the ground. So here we are, this is the polytunnel. Um, if you've been watching my channel, you'll know all about it. We've put a thick, thick layer of um, well-rotted manure, so almost compost, almost completely finished. It was two-year-old, um, huge, uh, dumper trucks of um, rotted manure and then we topped it off with a uh, topsoil and compost mixed uh, from a company called Field Compost and uh, yeah that's it this tunnel's never had anything planted in it um, so it's a bit of a risk but we did exactly the same with the other tunnel um, and if I walk you over there now it's not particularly cinematic um, we've had some really good growth in the other tunnel and you'd have seen that in my last video where we had a little catch up and a walk round. So we prepped the two tunnels exactly the same and we put catch crops in the left one to test the soil. We've had nothing in the right hand side. But what that does mean is that it's ridiculously dry in here. Um, so we're going to have to do some work to prep the soil moisture levels for planting out these tomatoes. Um, but yeah, so here are the six that have been in for three nights. Um, nice and strong no sign of damage on the leaves or frost damage or anything like that we have, we've not been having anything close to frost even outside but um i'm really happy with how these have taken and i did just have to move one of them slightly because my colleague um had got the spacings wrong on, on one of the plants so i just had to move them and there's some additional root growth already in the first three days of them being planted out in the ground so i'm really confident that we can start bringing out some of the trays of tomatoes like these and getting them in the ground so i've just popped up the other end 
uh, here's how I'm doing it. This is my um, plan for planting out the tomatoes. Because of the moisture issues in the ground, what I've done is I've given this whole run a real good water, a real soaking of water, just using the hose and the recycled water tank or water from the recycled tank that comes out of these um, taps here. Then I've gone along um, and dug my holes in the spacing, nice big deep holes because as I'll talk about in a minute, you can plant tomato plants really deep and that aids their production. And then what I've done uh, initially to soak in this whole row is then gone and filled each um, hole with water from the tap as well. And I'm actually gonna do that again, uh, just to make sure the area that we're planting in is really, really moist and it isn't gonna dry out because as you can tell by the soil in here at the moment, it's super, super, super crumbly and dry. What we've ended up with after that is um, some puddling, which means, oh, it's just started raining, brilliant. Um, spring, eh? Um, anyway, uh, we've started to get some puddling, which, you know, doesn't take long, I'll look at that one, to soak through because the uh, soil is so dry. So they're nice and wet and they're ready to plant in. I guess at this point, if I was um, adding additional nutrients to the ground, this is where I'd add it in. So I'm really confident uh, based on the trials we've done with products next door, that these is packed full of nutrients for now. And we might aid that with a little bit of liquid feed later in the season. But for now, I think with the brand new rotted compost, uh, composted manure, sorry, and the topsoil and uh, compost mix on the top, that there's plenty of nutrients in it. So we're not gonna add any additional nutrients, but if you were adding blood, fish and bone, um, grow more, that kind of thing, it, depending on whether you're uh, organic or not, if you're adding any of those natural um, products to the soil, uh, now would be the time I'd sprinkle a little bit in the bottom of each of those holes. Okay, so we're at the fun part now where we're on our hands and knees and we're gonna plant out these tomato plants. So if you've seen any of my other videos, the tomatoes we sell, sow in these trays, the six cell uh, or six tomato plants in each tray. Um, well, there's actually five in this one because we had a germination failure on one of them. And uh, my plants are now in the state where they've got a really nice root system. I can show you that. And they're ready to go out. Uh, we've created the big holes that are nice and moist and wet, so we're just going to pop that plant in. Now, some of you, if you're an experienced grower, will know that the deeper you plant the tomato plants, the better. Um, they've got this. I'm going to try and crawl over. This is going to be majestic. Um, they've got this fibrous stem where additional root growth will come out of the stem if it's in contact with the soil. So what you can do is create a bigger, wider um, root system by planting them nice and deep in the ground. Um, I find that planting them up to the first true leaves um, is the best way to do this. Now, some people will plant them like that and have the stem poking out the ground to create a real big, wide surface. I don't think that's necessary. I just think uh, I try to... Um, plant them up to the first true leaves, which on this particular plant is about here. Um, but you can't really get it wrong, especially when your soil is as dry as mine. The only thing you've got to be mindful of is rotting, but um, you won't get rotting with uh, this type of tomato plant um, necessarily, unless you're planting them in permanently wet soil, um, which is not the case here. So let me get this in the ground. So as I said, it's really simple. I've got a nice big wet hole. Um, just loosen the soil in the bottom of it, pop that plant in and then bring the soil around all the way up to the top of that true leaf. It's not rocket science. Uh, most people know how to plant a uh, plant, but like I said, with tomato plants, there'd be a temptation to um, have them a bit closer to the surface or planted a little bit further up. You can kind of tell the difference in height, um, I guess. If you were to plant them just at the surface with the soil level like you do with a lot of plants at a similar stage, you know, we've gained an extra inch or so of uh, stem under the soil um, and that will create a bigger, wider root system um, and it will give the plant the best chance of uh, producing a bumper crop of tomatoes. Okay, so um, I miscounted, I'm too short. 
well, I didn't miscount actually, to give myself some credit. Uh, there was two cells that didn't germinate. So I'm too short. So I'm gonna shoot back down to the greenhouse, grab two more and uh, stick them in. And then I'll show you when it's all done. One thing that I haven't um, mentioned in this, this particular variety is a cordon variety. So we'll need to string these up at some point. And um, we use these little clips that go at the bottom of the plant and clip to the stem and the string will go up and uh, be hooked up to the top of the polytunnel. Um, and this is a variety called Golden Nugget, which actually isn't a variety I've ever grown before, but I did invite the team, everyone in the team, including the owner, is really excited about the tomato production. It's one of the things that everyone keeps talking about is tomato production, and maybe that's part of the reason why I really want to get it going, even though we could probably do with waiting for the temperatures to be a few degrees warmer overnight. Anyway, we've talked enough about that. But I did invite the team to pick some particular varieties that they wanted to grow. Um, so we're going to do at least 10 different varieties of tomatoes across the two polytunnels. Uh, this particular one is Golden Nugget, which I believe off the top of my head, if I remember, I'll try and stick a picture up, is a little orange uh, cherry tomato, um, which would make sense. Golden Nugget. And there we have it. The uh, first row of tomatoes on the new site are in, which is pretty exciting because like the rest of the staff here, I enjoy growing tomatoes too. If I feel like I could make enough money on a farm just growing heirloom tomatoes, I probably would do. One of the bonuses of uh, working at a cafe site is uh, coffee on tap. Uh, don't judge the paper cup, it's my, totally my fault. I forgot to give them my reusable cup, which I left in my car. But yeah, it's a real bonus. What I'm going to do now is just uh, give them a bit of a gentle water. Uh, let me shower. Yeah, um, it's not too hot that I've got to worry about the leaves getting wet. But what this does is just ensures that any pockets of air and um, that are trapped where I've... What am I trying to say here? I can't do two things at once. You notice that I cannot do two things at once. I can't talk to you guys and even water at the same time, which is pretty embarrassing. What I'm trying to say is that this ensures that there's good contact between the root balls um, and gets rid of any pockets of air um, by sort of gently compressing the soil down a little bit further around the roots and the stem of the plants. Right then, that's it for today's video. Um, thanks for watching. I'll, obviously there's lots more to go in here and as and when we do it over the next few days, I'll uh, keep you updated um, and give you an update in the next coming weeks when all this is planted out. Uh, what it looks like and how these um, particular tomato plants uh, got on so um, until next time thanks for watching oh like and subscribe and do all that stuff i always forget to ask but it does actually make a huge difference because it just reminds people so um, like and subscribe and share and do all that stuff that helps my channel grow it's really appreciated thanks for watching bye 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 bye